As parents, you know, one of our jobs is to teach our children. We're always teaching our children about something from the time they could literally probably crawl. Don't touch that. That'll harm you or whatnot. Um, so we, we're always teaching our kids, but our children can also teach us lessons. Can you share a lesson when your girls taught you something? Mm. I mean, man, kids have been the greatest catalyst of growth in me. I feel like they are always teaching me. Um, I think the biggest one that has probably been the biggest influence for me in the last several years has been um, learning to be kind to myself when I make a mistake. Because like I said earlier, I don't like to make mistakes. I like to figure it out, do it right the first time, carry on. But I, I kept noticing in my kids this, uh, and one of my kids, you know, in particular, like would mess up and go, oh, I'm the worst in the world. And I was like, oh, oh, I don't like that. But in the reason, and one of the reasons why I didn't like it is because I've heard myself say that, right? You mess up, you make a mistake. Somehow I'm the worst. And um, I remember I was cooking dinner and I, um, I'm not a great chef by any means. If I could have one luxury in life, it would be for someone to cook for me. That's what I want in life. Um, but I remember I burned dinner and I was, it, whatever it was, it was burning and I was so frustrated. I was like, oh, I'm the worst. And this was, my youngest was, I think she was like four or five. So she still had that little voice. And from behind me, I heard her say, it's okay, mommy, be kind to yourself. We all make mistakes. And that was such a lesson of going, that's right. That's how we have to operate with ourselves. We have to talk to ourselves the way we talk to a friend that just like she said to me, be kind to yourself. It's okay. We all make mistakes. And so I think that for sure has really changed me over the last few years that now my first response isn't, uh, I'm the worst. It's okay. That happened, but let's be kind to yourself. We all make mistakes. How in this journey that you've been on that you're sharing with us, how has your faith played a part? What were some things that you learned um, as a result of you staying connected to God that helped you become a better parent for your children? You know, it's interesting how I think I grew up thinking that faith meant certainty and having children has been the most uncertain thing I have ever done. <laughs> and, and I realized that the, the opposite of faith is not doubt. It's certainty that actually faith is when you cannot see, you cannot see what you, so you're, you're living by faith. You're operating by faith is when you're in those uncertain times. So the moment that you become very certain, that's the opposite of faith. And so I feel like my faith increased during this time because I learned to lean into the uncertainty. I learned to not be afraid of the uncertainty um, and to be grasping out of fear for what felt secure or what felt certain. And I learned to be more curious. And I think having that posture of curiosity has increased my faith um, exponentially. Um, and especially my posture toward, you know, the, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, that, that loving your neighbor as yourself, curiosity is what has really increased um, that in my life. In your book, you empower women to do what they want, not what they should. Um, talk about how this has changed your life as a wife, a mom, a woman. Yeah. You know, I learned that lesson greatly by having a dog. Um, we kindly refer to him as the greatest regret of 2017. You know, we all do things for our kids, thinking our kids need something. They, they thought we needed a dog. We didn't need a dog, but we still have this dog. You know, he's, he's, um, you know, he's loved, he's loved, rest assured. But I, um, I just was like finding myself, I was the only one in the house walking him and he was, you know, he's near a hundred pounds. He's huge. He's just like, he walks me. And then we lived in like a downtown community. So he had to be on a leash. It was this whole ordeal. Well, you know, the whole point of walking is to feel good, right? You release endorphins, you come back happy, you've released your stress. Well, I would walk him and I would, I would come back. I've cussed out every neighborhood dog that barked at us. I've been angry. I'm so mad. And I was like, this is, this is not working, but I feel like I should walk this dog like a good dog mom walks the dog, right? And needs the exercise. Like I should do this. And I remember going, oh, I'm just not going to do that. 
Like if I feel like I should, I'm doing that because I feel like I should do that, that a good dog mom does that. Well, I'm just not going to do that anymore. And you know what? I took walks by myself and I was very happy. And that dog, he's just fine. He's still alive. I just stopped walking him, right? Um, but but that's what, it, and so it's a funny lesson, you know, that I learned from having a dog, but I just started having to, to pay attention to all the other things in my life that I was doing because I thought that I should do that. Um, and, and I felt like I, I just was shooting all the time versus, well, what do I really want to do? Um, who am I really? You know, you get down to all the things that we we do in life in our relationships because we feel like we should do them or, well, I guess I'm supposed to do that. And, but the truth is you don't have, this is your one life to live. You know, we're not asking you to be mean. So if you're, if you're like, I should do that, but I'm going to be mean instead, let's don't do that. Let's do that should thing if that's the case. But, um, let's pay attention to who you are and the life you want to live and, you know, and just kind of figure that out and pay attention to the shoulds and supposed tos and not let that dictate who you think you're supposed to be, but begin to let out who you really are. Um, and so I use that, those words basically as a, as a trigger. And anytime I would hear myself say that, it was like, oh, pay attention, be curious. Why are you saying that? Why do you think that a good mom, um, acts this way or is supposed to do this thing? And do you want to do this thing? If you want to do this thing, great. If you don't want to do this thing, it's okay to not do this thing. Um, and so that was a big, I don't know, just release again of those pressures and those expectations and those things that I thought I had to be, um, in order to be viewed as a certain way. Um, so I guess I have my dog to thank for that lesson, mostly. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm curious, what would be your advice for a spouse to support their spouse that's going on this journey um, of being raised by their parenthood? Um, were there some things um, that you needed from your husband that you got or that you had to vocalize? Where can um, the other spouse be supportive? Yeah, I think the posture of curiosity has done wonders even in our marriage, um, you know, on different faith journeys, on different parenting journeys. When we have approached each other with curiosity instead of judgment um, and going, okay, like, let's be curious about why are you feeling this way? What are you feeling? What are you working on? And not bringing a judgment to the table, but instead curiosity. I feel like we kind of give ourselves freedom to navigate this together in a way, even if there are times where maybe he didn't understand or I didn't understand, but we stayed there, right? We stayed present with each other and gave each other space to process, space to figure things out um, or to work through things. And I think that's what you can do with each other is approach each other with more curiosity and less judgmental or judgment and, and just be there, have that, have that presence and go, okay, I'm not going anywhere. And my husband and I, we talk a ton. We, I don't know if other couples do that. We sit down at night and hash out the day and talk it over or sit in the morning when the kids go off to school. And, you know, sometimes it's licking our wounds from fights from the kids, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But it's just having that time together to process and then giving each other the space to figure things out on their own. And then as we process it together. Why have you stopped uh, bubble wrapping your kids around the world? I think as parents, we tend to bubble wrap our children oh, yeah. from the outside world. Oh, nothing happened. You know, um, but why have you stopped doing that? Uh because at some point I want them to be adults who can handle things, right? We want them to be resilient. We want them to know how to face hardship and to rise from it. And the only way we learn how to do those things is to actually face the hard things. Um, you know, one of the stories that I shared in the book was when my daughter went off to middle school in sixth grade, they were giving lockers for the first time. And they, you know, went to the locker and there was, you know, cuss words all in, you know, the locker. And, and I, and one of, and I knew another mom that she's like, we'll just get some wallpaper and we'll just like cover it up. And I was like, I looked at my daughter and I said, listen, you're not so precious that you can't read a cuss word and fall apart. Like you're, this is the world. Like, it's okay. Like you're going to figure out how to live within it. You're fine. And I think when we empower our kids that they are strong and they are capable and they can handle whatever is in front of them, I think that goes a long way. But I think we have to take off some of the bubble wrap 
because I mean, and listen, it's parenting is a scary thing. There's so many things, right? Like I've never had more fear in my life than raising kids. Like that brings it all out. But we have to start taking off the bubble wrap so our kids can know that they are strong and capable and can handle anything without me because one day they will be without me. Um, God willing, like move out of this house, like give me my space back, right? Um, that we just want them to be capable. And, we, and I think the best way for them to learn those things is to take off the bubble wrap and they're going to bump into some things, but how great for them to bump into those things while they live in your home and they come home and they talk about this hard thing and they help, pro you can help problem solve, ask them questions to help them problem solve for themselves. That's a great place to be. And it starts with taking off some of that bubble wrap. Man.